I'm going to begin with you. Just sort of give us your view about what happened last night and what you think it means for the region and how we should be thinking today about the energy complex. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, what happened last night, well, I think, was a game changer for the region. I think Iran uh, was in a long trial and error process of testing Donald Trump. And I think they realized that they got a very strong message that you cannot cross his red lines. I think they're going to have to respond, but I think they're going to be very calibrated and careful. I think the tendency is to think that there's going to be a quick Iranian response, a major retaliation. We would discount that possibility. We think that there is certainly uh, uh, the risk that things could uh, miscalculate. Uh, but in reality, I think that the Iranians are going to be very, very cautious. We do know that they have additional attack plans uh, on the shelf to do uh, to, look, to look at uh, more attacks on oil infrastructure. But I would expect an Iranian response, just not a major retaliation. They do not want direct war with the, with, uh, with the United States. Do, do you expect then this move that we've seen in oil prices the, this morning to be short lived? Uh, well, I, you know, I got to say, before Soleimani's assassination, we did not see too much geopolitical risk premium in the price of oil. After the assassination, you've seen the price increase. And, uh, you know, again, given the possibility that Iran will, is likely to attack again, uh, even though they're going to be cautious about not crossing Trump's red lines, uh, I do think that you're going to see more. There's certainly more risk that you could see prices continue to rise. Yeah. Doug. Um Crude's been going up. Stocks can't get out of their own way, though. Why can't these stocks rise along with the price of crude? And if they can't now, when will they? Well, that, that's a good question. And, you know, we, we, we too believe that oil price is going to be a little bit stronger. But, you know, you're right, Scott. There's been a disconnect between the oil market and energy stocks in recent years. And it's really because, because big oil, EMP, and service company boards haven't really required. CEOs to have pay incentives that lead to strategies that create economic value. And so counterintuitively, higher oil prices have actually been negative for most energy stocks, and we think they're going to continue to be um, until that changes. Simultaneously, um, the buy side has aligned with us on our call for companies to take the pledge for greater capital discipline, and it's become the default corporate strategy in the sector. So we're actually happy to see that companies have become more disciplined. Um, and the surprise in 2020 could be that if the global economy remains strong, as Evercore ISI envisions, or if we have further escalation of tensions related to the situation with Iran and oil prices remain strong, the companies are going to actually take the surplus funds and return it to shareholders. And that'd be a good first step in making energy value propositions competitive with that of the rest of S&P 500. So we've underperformed in seven out of the last eight years in energy, but we're making progress. But we need to make progress because the group hasn't been investable for many of these reasons. Doug, I guess it's also worth noting, uh, we talk about crude, but, you know, natural gas prices are way down, so that hasn't necessarily helped some parts of the, uh, of the sector. But are there parts of this group that are already adhering to those kind of, uh, kind of capital discipline principles that you're talking about that are actually better positioned? You know, they really, they really have. Um, in 2017, when we started this call, we suggested, um, you know, the companies that return capital to shareholders started to use return on capital employed at the, at the corporate level um, and to pay CEOs would probably prosper in the market because it would lead to change strategies. And to the surprise of, of many, partially <laughs> including ourselves, the pledgers, uh, Chevron, BP, Shell, ConocoPhillips, et cetera, um, have been 90, 80 percent of the top 10 performers out of 30 in S&P Energy in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And so while this stock picking outcome has been highly improbable, we're calling for a four-peat in 2020 that the pledgers remain 80 percent of the top 10 performers in energy in 2020, which I, I realize would be highly improbable, but we think it's going to happen again because we think the buy side will continue to reward the companies that are creating value and returning capital to shareholders, just like in the other 10 sectors of S&P 500. You know, uh, Scott, the U.S. Defense Secretary, Mark Esper, has said that the game has changed. You've had the Ayatollah in Iran uh, calling for revenge and retaliation against the United States and the foreign minister there uh, calling this international terrorism. Given the ratcheting up at least of rhetoric, how are you advising your clients to protect themselves against any threat of potential attack from Iran on their facilities? Well, again, I think that the... the the advice that we're giving is that there's an, there's an immediate uptick in the risk to oil facilities in the region, mainly because the Iranians recognize the danger of going after U.S. personnel directly. 
I think you're going to see Iran be very careful about that, which is why we see uh, we're, we're advising our clients that there is a risk that the Iranians are going to turn back to what they were doing late last up until late last year, which is seizing of oil tankers and, and hitting Gulf uh, oil infrastructure. Uh, we, mm -hmm. think that, we think that e even sites as significant as Opkeg, which, was, which, which caught the market really by surprise, uh, are, are back on the table again for the Iranians. So we're advising them that despite the deployment of U.S. troops to the region, yeah. we think that's more symbolic and that the risk is going up to those facilities.